Can you tell me a little bit about your podcast? They told me, they said that they listened, but I, I'm hey. unfamiliar. Uh, so I started a podcast maybe a year and a half ago, something like that. It's called Black With No Cream. It's just creator community. It's also a podcast, so we have like a private Facebook group. I made a video because I figured if I had to talk by myself for 15 minutes, I should just, it's easier. <laughs> I, I talk with my videos. That's what I do for a living, so I could just play that shit, and then yeah. you guys would see that. But the podcast is basically me interviewing creators that are killing it and the whole goal is for me meeting these people along their way they're like my friends and shit yeah but i feel like as i meet them our conversations one-on-one -on -one are so valuable to me and i'm like man it'd be really really tight if i could share this with everybody or just listen back to it later on because what we said was so important yes sir so uh i started the podcast and i started you know poking at them to get on my show and you know you burning my bridges and people are coming on the show and they're sharing their stories we, ch we chat we talk about like how they got to where they are Matt Alonzo was just on it maybe two weeks ago mm -hmm. so it's cool um, but it's been working we've been doing it for a, a while and there's just so much value from all types of creators like I don't want to just talk to directors I don't want to just talk to photographers you know what I mean like my I learned so much from my graphic design homie and ooh, my graphic design homie I don't draw shit, but when I talk to her, I'm mad inspired. You know, so, I learned so, it's so really much. really creative. Yeah, creative yeah. tour managers, like, because you think if you're a videographer and you want to shoot a show or a photographer, just as an example, who is gonna let you shoot a concert? You're always wondering, and I get asked that shit all the time because I tour with artists and stuff. My video explained what I do, but uh, the best person you could try to you know abuse is the tour manager hit them up find out who that person is because that's the person that's going to take care of stuff the artist is never going to see you know they got millions of dms and and you have to think strategically but when you talk to a tour manager and they start talking about how casual they'd be talking to fans or they'd be oh my normal days i get up and i go hang out around the venue and stuff if you catch that person that's a ticket into the show you know you just have to figure out how to play your cards so i try to talk to all different creators i, I guess. hope y'all wrote that note down seriously giving you angles yes you know it's a good question internet man because if you think about it especially in like rap it's the squad like do you have like the squad Seriously. especially from my experience of touring um some artists i tour with it's like they're very hidden but most people like to when they get a dope job and they're like oh i'm the tour manager for this person they like to tell people so you'll find it it's in people's bios it's searchable you can everyone's done some sort of interview with these people you can find out who these people are and and if it's not them who else is in their their sure. little squad they got a photographer if you are nice to the photographer he might or she might let you into the show to come shoot and i've done that a million times when people hit me up like hey man i would love to i know you're in my city in arkansas and i i've been following your shit for a minute like this is dope could i come shoot a show and i'm like yeah, come on. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then we only ever give three songs, right? Like you always, you always have to fight that battle. I'm, I'm just specifically talking about shows right now. I don't know why. But when you're shooting a show, you get three songs in the pit, right? That's, we all have to deal with that shit. No flash, blah, blah, blah. You're just stuck there. And then you're out. So I'm always telling people if they can't, if that's what they're giving, then you need to find a way to hustle your camera into the crowd and go. Most of the time when I'm shooting with the artist, I'm never even in the pit anyway. So it doesn't, basically you're saying it doesn't stop. Keep, yeah, keep, keep finding ways to shoot. But also, I'll, let, I'll give that person, if I could tell that they truly care about their shit and want to learn, I'll be like, yo, I'll tell our security, like, yo, this dude's good, let him shoot. She, she's fire, let her shoot all day. Like, the, she got the pit, the whole show. And you never, that's just because they reached out. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. <clears throat> I always try to tell people it's all about, connecting with different creators and being like, you know, try to offer something. Maybe if you have something to offer, not like, hey, I'll give you 50 bucks, but I mean like- Something serious. Yeah, yo, you wanna go check out a dope sh spot in the city that you never have been to before? I'll, I'll take you there. We could go shoot photos, there's a waterfall, there's fucking, the spot's bomb burgers. You know what I mean? Like, you just have to think outside the box. I ramble a lot, so we're gonna kill this time real easy. No, I mean, I got similar type of a, uh, I don't know if you was here when I was saying what I do earlier. Uh, I don't know, I, I ran and grabbed but coffee company a wise way and we do the similar I interview professionals and use their testimonies to inspire children all oh, right right, right. So, i just got where my boy back there yeah so a bunch of talking and i if you can't see if you guys can't see i really enjoy it i'm sitting here learning from you guys profession and so yeah we can sit here and talk all day because i got a trillion questions a trillion yeah. sorry matt you're gonna have to this is our day now yeah we're moving <laughs> it back matt you know whenever he does you know get here so how did you get into film in the first place uh, skateboarding and music. Somebody said the same thing earlier. I feel like it's a lot of us, right? 
Does anyone else skate and not good enough so you start filming? <laughs> I always snowboarded too, and I, I, I would snowboard in Iowa. I'm from fucking Iowa, so we would go drive two hours to this hill, and I would just bring the camera all the time and just film and film and film, and then tell my friends to film me, and I just thought we're gonna make the illest edit and we're gonna be famous and shit. And then I wanted to move to go to film school in Colorado at the Art Institute and make snowboard films for a living. So at the beginning, what was like, what was your break? Because obviously coming here after doing film, uh, for skateboarding and whatnot, what was like the breaking point for you? Uh, so I moved here when I was still in Iowa. I went to South by Southwest, and when I was at that festival, um, I got connected. There's a guy that so you have Top Dog Entertainment, TD, Kendrick Lamar, is a Schoolboy Q, all those people. Yes. So Top Son Musa is managing this artist who I'm friends with. They're connected somehow, right? And I, he just, Musa knew he wasn't in South by Southwest, but he knew that his friend had a camera guy there. And he's like, yo, can you go shoot my new artist? So I hopped over. I knew it was TD affiliated. I didn't know anything about this artist or whatever. His name's Kembe X. So I started shooting him. And he's not signed by them or anything, but I just was like, oh, he, you know, he's in the circle, so I might as well go out. Yeah. And I shot that shit and flipped an edit back when Instagram had like 15 second videos. Shout out. And, uh, and he tripped about it and he like called my friend and was like, yo, I want to take your boy Ben on the TDE world tour. And I'm in <laughs> Iowa and I'm was hearing this. exact sh- voice? <laughs> yeah, and my friends like circled around me because I was just still editing like a nerd and they just came back off the call and they're like, yo, he just said this, boom, boom, boom. And I was like, oh, I'm going to shoot this world tour, Kendrick <laughs> Lamar, oh, this, this could be crazy. And then that never happened. Uh, but I thought it was, and I was waiting in Iowa preparing. And I like was, get, you know, I had my gear, and I was thinking of like how I would shoot a tour visual and all this shit. And uh, and I kept calling, and you know, they had their business, so the tour uh, ended up happening more recently. It's called the Champion Tour. They just did it, but at the time, this was supposed to be like this was like three and a half years ago. So I, I knew I needed to get back to California to be in front of Musa again, so he could remember that I was tight. Because yeah. he's, I'm sure this dude meets tight people all day long. But I was like, he, if I get out there, maybe I could keep making videos and he'll see yeah. me. And uh, when I got out here, I just started working on um, not that because he was busy doing other shit. But I knew I needed to keep working. And my friend Andrew Sandler, he's a director. He's fucking amazing. He brought me under his wing. He was directing Chris Brown's documentary. And so he just had me come through and was like, yo, you want to see like the beginning two minutes of this doc? I was like, yes. And so we went there. And then I just started opening my mouth. I was like, oh, so what if you did this? Or what if we did this? And then he had me back the next day and the next day. And then like nine months later, I'm a co-editor on that film. Me and him edited the whole movie together. It released like fucking worldwide in uh, theaters and shit and Netflix. And that was crazy. So it would be wise for these people to make sure they make their voice heard on sets or behind the craft that they're particularly doing. Yeah, in a respectable way. Like I, yeah. I knew I... He allowed me, he asked my opinion, and I knew I could voice it, and, and if it was trash, he would shut me down. And I was just, like, blown away that we had the ability to work with an artist that was so massive, and I'm from Iowa, and what the, there's, Slipknot is from Iowa, I don't know those dudes. Other than that, we got nothing. And so I just started pitching ideas, and it worked, and then we made a f- fucking controversial f- documentary that was really a weird story to tell, um, and tried to do it at the best of our ability. And it was a learning process for me, but I mean, by doing that, then I'm now editing Chris Brown's music videos, and then I'm befriending him, and then working with all these other artists, and like, it was just like a chain reaction, but it was like getting in that room, I had to prove to Andrew that I was like, had some sort of talent, so even before that, I was seasoning that, like, as I was connected to him, yo, check out this drone shot I just got, this was crazy, right? (laughs) He'd be like, damn, you should do this on set, you should do this, I don't know, it's a dumb long story. No, have you ever, (laughs) did you have like any of those surreal moments now? Like every so often, you you on set, and you be like, I just can't even believe. Yes, I'm here. Like, yeah, why am I talking I in front of you guys right now? I don't like filming know. wipeouts yeah. with a small camera. Now I'm managing this on this set. Uh, yeah, I was just talking to my boy Dave. Dave's back there. Dave, stand up. You got that beautiful creator black no cream T-shirt on. I like that. Dave um, don't feel like standing. Yeah, Dave don't want to stand. He's too good. There's Dave. Dave and Malave, everybody. He said he's too good. <laughs> Dave's like my right hand and all this shit. Um, we were just driving. I was like, 
yo, there's a Hollywood sign. I'm like, no matter how long I live here, it still trips me out to like look at that and remember coming out here the first time hunting for it. I was probably Seriously. in the fucking valley. <laughs> like, <laughs> where the fuck is the Hollywood sign? I was like way over there. But it just, I'm like, man, something about being a kid, knowing what that meant or stood for. And then now I like my gym faces that shit or I skate by it every day and it doesn't really mean anything now. It's just Hollywood's pretty nasty. But that's the other <laughs> side. That's the other side they don't tell us. Yeah, they don't tell you that shit. I'm from Ohio. Right, shout yeah, out. Yeah. Midwest. You know, what's up? It's, it's a cool hike. I went when it's hot as hell, and it was still, it was cool, but it was just gross. There's, how's yeah. the trash up in the foot? Like, why are you hiking and throwing your shit in the ground? Like, how does so it even, up. yeah, how does it even get up there? I don't know, man. Yeah. Yes. Haunted. Ooh. Um, I, I guess know. you could shoot the film on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know. Um, I guess, what about the guy that did the Holly Weed? I don't know, is he haunted? That was legendary. <laughs> that was super tight. Yeah, I That was crazy. There. There's a lot of stunts that have been happening on, on the Hollywood sign. Yeah. So what's next really for you? Obviously doing everything that you got going on now. I'm trying to keep the questions in the line what I know you got a lot to already show oh, and yeah. you gotta um, you gotta talk 40 times in between <laughs> yeah I do gotta talk a lot uh, so I'm trying to keep it no, basic my, my main thing is black with no cream like to me like I've worked with artists I work with brands and um, create content direct shit creative direct shit whatever I gotta do edit and all that stuff all day but through doing this I explain it in the video, and I don't want to be repetitive when you guys see that. And if the video is boring, you guys just tell me. I'll shut it off. But uh, like to me, the most important thing is being from Iowa and being in a place where I wanted to be involved in the music industry somehow. I relied on people at the top to teach me, right? Mm. So they weren't doing it purposely, but they would make a tour vlog with Khalifa day to day episodes or Big Sean make his shit, or whatever it may be. And I would watch these videos like, how's an artist move? How are they creating the videos? How's that guy filming this? How is he, you know, how does he make a story out of this shit every week or whatever it was? And I would study that. I would read fucking every interview. I would, you know, all that shit. I consume, consume, consume. And that was me learning. Um, but I would have killed to be in a spot where I could have reached out and connected to them. And I tried that shit all day, man. Emails forever. My emails were the shit too. I was mad organized. I was very professional. Like if you see the email, you're going to respond, but they get 10,000 of them and they never see that shit. Now we have Instagram, Twitter, all this shit that we addictively like look at. And it's easier to get a hold of some people now, which is crazy. But for me, I wanted to build a space where, you know, me and Iowa could tap in and have access to sometimes, like, you know, my friend, she shoots all of Jay-Z's photography, like, she, his photographer. She'll pop in the group or hop on the interview or answer questions or I can utilize my friends in the, in the industry to actively, you know, be involved in this community, which is so dope to think, like, if I could have tapped into a fa fucking Facebook group five years ago and just asked a question and immediately someone answers it and it doesn't have to be someone that's done some dope shit fame wise like some people are just asking questions like hey man i'm from wherever fucking nebraska and i want to i do wedding videos every weekend that's how i make my mm. bread and how, what lens should i get for this i'm like i don't fucking know i don't i don't shoot wedding videos all day and i don't know what camera you have or any of these things but there is a dude that's fucking fire in maine or some shit so who does that for a living too people. yeah and they they share the info to each other it's do, really cool do you think sometimes too many film people get caught up in the equipment over the creativity yes um I just did Beyonce and Jay-Z's tour, and I shot all that shit on my A7S II, which I used two years ago on Schoolboy Q's tour. Didn't, that was it. S still using a fucking beat-up camera for the biggest artist in the world, which is crazy. I, I was going to buy a Red Gemini and just use that, because I, like, I don't like having a lot of shit. I like, if I can have a bag with my extra whatever it is for quick shooting stuff, like that's key. Um, so to me, it was more important to have like small, quick setups. Even when we do documentaries, like there's so many times when we're shooting docs and we're shooting on reds and I'm questioning that all day long and it looks great, but all of a sudden someone starts saying some important shit and that camera fucking the cards out or something happens or it overheats, you gotta step up or it's like a really emotional moment and all of a sudden you hear the fan like and I'm sitting there like, Oh my God. <laughs> what the fuck? And so to me, or and, and if you have a DSLR or something quick, you could just pop, and you're getting the moment. Even if it's trash, to me, it's more important about what the moment is. Mm. Stylistic, yes, we can go shoot interstitials and all kinds of beautiful shit and make it cinematic as fuck. That's all day, we can do that. But for raw, 
in the moment shit, quick shooting shit, I love the fact that we can have a nice 4K cell phone that can capture that shit. I don't know how many times I've filmed Beyonce and Jay-Z with a fucking cell phone. Like, oh, wow. Because all of a sudden I'm walking to go to catering and some shit's happening. I'm just like, oh, fuck. And I just pop up my phone because I don't have my camera. I left it, char- you know, whatever. Yeah, it's it doesn't matter what if it was with my phone or what the, at least I got that moment, you know? So that's the most important thing, in my opinion. I think it says a lot because I see that. I see um, almost like, I don't want to say excuses, but it is kind of like excuses. I can't do this because I don't have the red. I can't do this because I don't have the so-and-so. Oh, man. When it's like, no, you can do it. The equipment don't make you. You make the equipment. 100%. I agree. So, so that's what I definitely wanted you to elaborate on, and yeah. I'm glad that you spoke on it. I, I Yeah, I'm all about that because I feel like – so we just did – um, our first like contest. It was cool for me because we have never partnered with the brand for Black Widow Cream. Everything that it, you see within the community and the podcast and all that shit, I just pay for out of my pocket because I think it's tight. Yes, and so we finally partnered with Epidemic Sound, which is like a, a music licensing company or whatever. And so we did a, c- a competition where everyone had to do a one take video in 48 hours, but you you couldn't have any cuts. You know, you have to make something interesting in just one take. But I don't know how many fucking DMs I got from people that were like, man, I really wanted to do it, but my gear's back at the office and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you have a phone. Fuck, you got a phone. What are you talking to me on? Like, that's the biggest, like, I wanted to, if I had more time, it was hard to host a contest. That shit's like a lot of work. But I wanted to just stun on everybody with my fucking phone and make some ill shit in one minute and and show you that it's pot. Like, it does not matter. The tools do not matter. It's about your fucking vision, you know? You know what you could have did? You should have gave your, um, you should have submitted your nephew. Somebody like 10 years old with a cell phone, even though the video wouldn't have been good, yeah. should have just used that to prove a point. It's, to say, it's, look. it's an excuse. And I felt like it was a bummer because people look at and then then I reply and I I'm a big advocate obviously I started this community for a reason like I would reply to everyone I it's just like I need to I feel like obligated to from where I'm from to try to respond to anyone who has a proper question like not a beehive person but uh (laughs) when people message me and they say that shit it still makes it I feel like I gotta go out of my way to explain to them that that's not an excuse. Like, yo, you, sh- yeah, but you could have took your phone out or like, oh, I, I was had a great idea for the video, but all my people couldn't come. And I'm like, so what? Sh- show me what it's like to make coffee in the morning for you. That's as simple as, at least you submit something. At least you created some shit. Instead, they chilled all weekend. They didn't make nothing. They didn't put anything out and that's it. And so what you're trying to get into this game, but you don't want to make shit like that. And this is the easy, plus I get got five grand in prizes to give away for fuck and free like yeah, that's that's you have no excuses that's weird to no. me actually but now we want to show your video and oh, pretty yeah. much get things started i went through the ropes of paying my dues working for free getting underpaid and taken advantage of but i was willing to do whatever it took to get my name out there i was lucky enough to find incredible mentors and friends that i could grow and learn from in the process and help put everything into motion for me which later set me up to be able to work with some of the greatest artists in the world And while all of this was happening, I started to notice that other aspiring creators were reaching out to me for advice. Thousands of messages began rolling in from people who were just like me, trying to figure it out. They just needed a little push. So I started a private creator community called Black With No Cream in August of 2017. This would be an online home for creators of all kinds who were interested in becoming the best at what they do. The goal was simple. Build a space where creators could come and ask questions, share their work, offer advice, provide opportunities, and best of all, meet people within the industry. I started this community so that the next guy or girl could get to where I am easier than I did. I started this to provide resources that didn't exist when I was coming up, and it worked. Thousands of creators from all around the world have joined and are active as fuck. We have 4,000 members from all over the world. Yo, this is my dad. He's in the Black With No Cream group. I'm from Dubuque, Iowa. I'm from Cop Lake, Hawaii. Detroit, Michigan. Perth, Western Australia. I'm from Shanghai. I'm from the Cayman Islands. I'm from, I'm from Sacramento. I'm from New York, Houston, Texas. We're on a camera. I'm from Brazil. The activity is booming as creators share their art and ideas and show their growth every day. I eventually started the Black Window Cream podcast as an additional opportunity to provide education to the community. The podcast consists of me interviewing very successful creators in the industry with the hopes of sharing their success stories, tips, and suggestions on how to become an iconic creator within the Black Window Cream community. The feedback I've gotten since I launched Black Window Cream has been insane. So many cool success stories sharing how the Black Window Cream community has helped them and offered them shortcuts to their goals. It's really impressive stuff. 
the ability to get questions answered and being pointed in the direction of how to approach certain problems and topics. And this kind of gives you the inspiration to want to be a better creator. I feel if I don't check in with Black Snow Cream, I'm kind of letting myself down. I've actually learned so much from so many people I don't even know. So this group is definitely a, a gem. And I thank Ben for making this shit, man. Like when I listened to the podcast at work, I was like, oh shit. I was meant to find this shit. I was meant to find this podcast. Like, God, thank you. <laughs> Hearing feedback like this has made me beyond hype to have built such a powerful platform for creators, and I can't wait to watch you grow. Support the Black Window Cream movement on Patreon and get exclusive access to shit. If you have not signed up for the private community, hit the link in the description. It's absolutely free. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to tune into the podcast and see more of our content. And you can also listen to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or any podcast app that you prefer. We're in this shit together. I appreciate your day one support, and I look forward to the future of Black Window Cream. All right, that's the end of this video. Keep creating, you motherfuckers. Support Black Window Cream yeah. on Patreon, right motherfucking now!